Hello and welcome to episode 79 of the Talk Nintendo podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Casey Gibson, and joining me this fine evening, as always, the one, the only, Mr. Common Periwinkle. Casey, I have some good news. What's that, my good sir? Gary's back. Gary's back, 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 back again. Guess yep. who's back, back, back? Gary. Tell a friend, friend. Hey, Casey. Gary's yes. back. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, God, you got, I was like, yes. <laughs> Go on. What, what were you going to say? <laughs> I'm telling a friend. Yes, he's yeah. emerged. He's emerged from the darkness. Yep, I just wanted to announce that to everyone, so everyone... Knew. And, and we'll, we'll be hearing a little something from him in a minute. Yep. But well, b- before we get yeah. into that... And, and before we get into what we've been playing, how you been, Perry? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing. I'm on top of the world. Are you? I really am. Yeah. A- any any reason in particular? Oh, you know, just life. Life in general. It's good. Pax is coming up. Ooh, I can't, can't I wait was, for that. I was actually thinking about that earlier, and uh, this will be like the normal, like the last normal show, at least for. I mean, it'll be normal for everyone listening next week as well but it'll be sort of a a rushed or um a quick turnaround yeah. because we're going to be up in boston on wednesday so we're going to have to have everything all set up ready to rock and roll you know mm-hmm. probably uh wednesday morning so you're gonna have to you're do right. some some on the fly editing and, yep, and you're uh, i hope you're ready on the fly posting yep yeah luckily that's easy <laughs> We'll probably just post it early, right? I mean, like, we won't have to worry about um, posting yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, Thursday. yeah, we'd, I would say either post early on Wednesday or we could post it, like, Thursday morning before we go um, into the uh, expo, you know? But, yeah. honestly, I figure probably post early because we'll Let's probably have some early, sort of... Because we're going to uh, do so much stuff. Yeah, some other stuff that we won't really want to... Hourly podcasts at PAX. <laughs> just, we'll li- live stream the whole thing, per- Periscope. You know, I say that, I say that now, but it's like, you know, when you're there, it's like, oh, you're so tired. Oh, well, we're going to, oh man. Um, you know, for, I don't know how many people uh, were listening this time last year, but we got a bunch of really great interviews. Uh, they were all audio based, but this year we're stepping it up. We've got a camera and we're going to be doing some video interviews and I think just sort of maybe even a vlog of the whole trip if, uh. I think that would yeah. be cool, too. So um, there'll definitely be a lot of stuff going on. I don't know if there'll be any... De- I'm sure we'll probably squeeze in one dedicated Talk Nintendo podcast. Maybe that might be good for, like, a Saturday night, you know, after yeah. we're sort of, you know, done exploring the city and, and have a little bit of uh, time to sit down and sort of reflect on all the crazy games we were playing. Yes. But yeah, speaking I mean, of absolutely. crazy games, Perry, you've yeah, been playing one, haven't you? And, I mean, it's not necessarily too crazy. I wouldn't say it's crazy at all, but (laughs) that is Toki Tori. Yes. (laughs) Toki Jimmy. Yeah, so probably one of the least crazy games ever. Uh, Toki Tori is a good old puzz form. Mm. Uh, This is from Two Tribes, uh, which I think are now... Not anymore, but they're publishing their games on Switch. You know, like they did uh, that game you reviewed. Rhyme? Rise? R- Rive? Rive. Rive. Yep, yep. They did Rive. Yeah, that was a fun game, actually. Yeah. And so this is Toki Tori, the original. Uh, Toki Tori 2 Plus came out, I think, just a few weeks ago, like a month ago, I think, um, on Switch. And uh, I have that on Wii U. Um and what it is, the, so the second one is way different from the first, the original one. The original is just straight up a puzzle form. That is a puzzle platformer. Uh, and the, the hook of it is like Toki Tori, the main little bird, the character, can't jump. Mm, okay. So, so it's very similar. So it to, sort of has you know, like the Donkey Kong and Mario, right? I literally was going to say to Mario vs. Donkey Kong, to that series, okay. yeah. I was Absolutely. going to say, because I've actually never played a Toki Tori game in my entire life. Okay. So okay. So this is, uh, you were giving me the rundown. But I have yeah. played uh, the Mario and Donkey Kong games, so that makes, uh, that sort of paints a picture for me. So I sw- feel like I sort of know what's going on. Right. Well, it's very interesting because I think the difference between Toki Tori and its sequel 
is so strange and fascinating and weird because like Tokitori 2 plus goes into like a, a, a metroidvania territory where it's like a big open world with puzzles this one is just level based and it's really like more like Mario vs Donkey Kong um, the gameplay is very simple you walk you know and you're going up ladders and and you're jumping off or you know you're you're walking off of ledges and, and you know flapping your way down and the whole point is just to collect all the eggs in the level and then you're done um, and so you know there's some already there's some you know I, I mean if you can't jump then where's the skill right so mm-hmm. so it introduces little powers that you can get um, for instance I think the first one or, or one of them is a bridge building so uh, you, you can build like a tile of bridge to, to get over a gap or something so because you can't jump right yeah so you'll have limited supply of those so you have to figure how do I get all these eggs with only having three bridges you know now is it um, like um, Mario where or Mario and Donkey Kong where you can like so I should say do you set it up press play quote unquote and he just starts moving and then like is that how it sort of operates oh no Nope, you control him l- oh, like okay. a platformer. Okay, yeah. so because yeah, I you... was thinking along the lines of where you had to, where you sort of right. press. Okay, not like the not like the mini ones, like like yeah. the like the first Mario or like Donkey Kong ninety four. Okay, kind of okay. like that. Yeah, um, but you're right. Good question. Uh, so you have these powers. So it's like you know, like bridge building. One of them is teleporting, where it's like you can go like up, down, left, right, as long as it ma- as long as you can fit in that space. There's like a set amount of like two tiles high, left like left right up down that you can warp to and so you'll get you know those um there's a ice gun that you can use to freeze enemies so there's enemies on the screen uh, and you can die you know once you get hit you're dead now these are really simple levels so and there's a really cool feature that i don't know if this was in uh, i can't remember if it's in the original but you can rewind which is really cool uh, oh that's cool so when you die though i have i don't know if you can just do that at any point but it's like if you get killed you can rewind and just go straight back to before you made the mistake. That's um, nice. So you don't which, have to do the entire puzzle absolutely. again. Yeah. I, I yeah, always like when they give that option, you know, make it as friendly, uh, player friendly as possible. Yeah, yeah. And that's really good. Um, and then, uh, let me see, the bridge, portal, ice. Oh, and then there's like this block moving mechanic where like if, if there would be like a narrow strip like of, uh, like a like a vertical block that you can pick up and flip to the left or right of you. So it's like it, it'll be in the way, but you can flip it so it's on your other side so you can continue through. Um, and then you use that in puzzles to jump on it or to I mean to land on it or to get to other places. So um, it's really very simple. There's nothing groundbreaking here. Not that there has to be. I just mean it's it's what you'd expect. You know, you're just collecting eggs, um, and so it's. It's pretty fun. Um, like I, I enjoyed my I, my my time playing with it. Uh, the the my, my biggest gripe, and this is just me. I mean, like this is my personal opinion, right? Is like I am just not a fan of the art in the game. Uh, what it reminds me of is like iPhone game artwork. Um, and I've played this. The just second, feels the sort second. of cheapish. It, yeah, but, like I, mean, I know you like I know what you mean. Sort of fl- not like, flashy, but like yes, almost like that. But right, like, like the more like, modern version of flash art. <laughs> like you can tell this was a WiiWare port, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just not. I just don't like the style. I don't think. I mean, because it's not. I think if it was pixel art, it would be awesome. Honestly, I think that that would have done wonders for this game, but it's not, and it's just kind of like it's still untiled, you know. There's still tiles that's made to make these levels. Like you could easily have a level editor to make your own puzzles, which I don't think is in this game. That would be really cool. Um, yeah, but, they, uh, that's you would have found it by now. You would have been all over that bad boy. I th- I th- yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's just the character is cute, but it's just not like I don't know. Like he doesn't have that. That he's missing it. Feel. He does. He's yeah, not all know. of that. And a yeah, bag of potato know. chips. I, I feel like the second game captures it a lot better. To be honest, like I feel like it's just that the overall production looks better. But I mean, even like the level selection, 
on it. It's just kind of like, yeah, like cheap kind of. I don't know. But um, there's a lot of content in the game. Uh, there's like five worlds, and each world there's like at least like 12 normal levels. Um, and then you can unlock like hard levels and bonus stages. So there's a lot of stuff in it. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good game. It's a, I mean, it's a good puzzle. If you like puzzle forms, you should be all over Tokitori. Um, and I think it probably cool. It's kind of cool, like I said before, to see the difference between the first and the second one. Uh, but, uh, you know, because I just think that's, that's so that's so weird how they how they change the genre so much, but it keeps it similar. And the second one is a lot different because you only have a certain amount of things that you use. And um, so I do want to play through the second one again after playing through this one. But um, is the second yeah. one coming to Switch or? Yeah, it's already out. Oh, it's, oh they both can't. Oh, yeah, that's right. OK. Yeah. So um, and these yeah. are pretty inexpensive games, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. Uh, oh, I, oh, I just checked. Four forty nine for Toki Tori on Switch. Oh yeah, because I think it's on a ten percent discount. Yeah, four less than five bucks. And especially yeah. if you use those gold points, baby, bring that yeah. sucker down. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, it's just it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's a solid puzz form. So nothing wrong with a uh, a true and tried puzz form. That's right. But let's move on with. Uh, uh, an RPG you've been slugging through. Which one? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah, it's been a good year for the RPG fixings for Casey. And uh, this last one, an interesting one, I will say. And uh, that game is The Alliance Alive. Atlas's late, late, latest game, uh, actually, I believe it comes from uh, Cattle Cattle Call Games, I believe, is the developer for this game. But uh, now this is sort of like um, a game that came out a few years ago, I think. Uh, Legend of Le- Legend of Legacy. Legend of Legacy. I always have trouble saying that title. For, it's I'm a like, weird. It, it's a weird name. Because it's like I always want to say Legacy, you know, but Legend of Legacy. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, This is sort of like the same team, um, you know, took another crack at it because from all accounts, that game was also sort of a flawed game that had some things going for it, but also had some things that sort of, you know. Yeah, I know that there's a fan base out there for Legacy, so. Yeah, so this game, I know Neil was excited uh, because he liked uh, enough of the last game and he was hoping that they sort of improved upon it in this game, but um, honestly, this game, again, another flawed game, so... To start us off, the story is sort of um, sort of interesting in the beginning. Uh, there's pretty much uh, demons, beast folk, and humans, and that's sort of like the hierarchy. So it's like uh, the humans are the lowest of the the low, you know. So they're sort of um, you know kept in check by the beast folk, who are sort of kept in check by these demons, or I don't know, it's spelled D- demons. D a e m o n. Demon, de- de- must uh, be demons. I, oh. But they're not like demons. They're like, they look like little oh. like fox people almost a little bit. Um, but yeah, so right. so that's sort of like the uh, hierarchy. And you're introduced to a, a bunch of characters um, in this game. You know, the the party size is actually pretty big. Five characters in an active party. Um, so you know, that's oh, wow. for an RPG. That's sort of a high end. But it's interesting in the beginning. You sort of meet. Um, each group of people and it's sort of like the story sort of intertwine a little bit and um it's it's pretty cool i like that but once you sort of get your groups together the the story sort of just becomes sort of bland and uh sort of uninteresting i mean it's still pushing you forward and you know it's not so bad where it's like they just don't really develop much more than sort of like the these are the main points we need to go sort of do to stop this from happening and it's like okay and Mm -hmm. uh I mean, to me, like I said, it was sort of not bad, but it just felt sort of underdeveloped um, as they pushed sure. on. And one of the, the interesting things is that there are a bunch of different guilds uh, throughout the world. And as you can imagine, the Alliance Live, it's sort of like a, hey, we all need to come together to overcome this thing. 
And I thought that aspect was sort of interesting because there there aren't really, or I shouldn't say the game doesn't really push one character to the forefront as like the main character, you know? It's sort oh, of like okay. you have your group of people and they all are sort of, you know, in, in this together. So it's not like, oh, we're just going to default to this one character because he's the de facto leader, you know? So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I thought this was sort of interesting how it's like, all right, you're coming from all these different walks of life forming together. And I just felt like that sort of ended up being sort of brushed over upon sort of uh, sort of quickly, you know, and I was like, oh, I wish they'd sort of ran more with that element. But as I said, they sort of the story itself is sort of, you know, once it gets to that certain point in the game, it's like, OK, it's just sort of the the driving factor. Now, as far as the combat goes, it's uh, interesting, to say the least. Um, I guess I've not played, like, the Saga series, but from all accounts, I believe it's similar to that uh, style of gameplay. So you don't actually level up. Um, none of your characters, like, you're not, oh, I'm level 4 now, I'm level 5. Different aspects of your character will level up, like, oh, your HP went up, your, uh, your SP, which is sort of like your spell, I, I don't think it stands for spell power but you know what i mean it's it's your mana apparently uh, you know essentially and like that'll increase and different things will increase as you're battling um so it's not you know your standard rpg where it's just like you gain a level and all your stats sort of get a boost so that's sort of cool but it's also so i know some games have it where you know if you get hit a bunch your hp will increase or you know where if it's sort of correlating to like if this action happens this will increase and i didn't feel right. that way with this game uh like i didn't really know why it was like oh, okay we're just leveling up here like i'm killing monsters and some of my stats are sort that of randomly like me with increasing. every other jrpg yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i just like how am i i just remember in xenoblade x i remember being like how do you level up am i leveling up what what am i leveling up how am i doing this you know, I just I always have like weird questions like that. Yeah, I'm just hoping for the best. Yep. And yeah, then you might not uh, like this game too much because they don't really give you any uh, explanation really with anything. This game, like yeah. when when like you said with the battle system, as I was saying, it's sort of random. There might be some sort of method to the madness as far as how stats are increased, but they don't tell you. Um, you know, they really don't tell you much at all because uh, each character can use any of the items or any of the weapons, I should say. And you're going to pick a weapon, and then when you use that weapon, you will just randomly unlock new skills, which is sort of cool. So you'll just use, like, okay, I've got my... Uh, just making it up. Or when with the tanks, like, oh, I have a block or a shield bash, essentially. So I'll use that, and it's sort of your entry-level skill, right? And then as you keep mm -hmm. using that, it'll be all of a sudden you'll get sort of like a flash, like awaken. And then all of a sudden you learn a new spell that you can use now further on. And um, I sort of like that. I thought that was sort of cool. So just using your weapon will just randomly um, unlock skills that, you know, generally continue to get better and better. And as you level up, you unlock talent points, which you can go into um, like a little talent bar menu. And each weapon you can go into and there are different uh points or different skills you can use your points upon so like uh for instance with the sword you jump in there and it's like oh sword novice it costs 100 skill points you use that and now every spell you use will be negative one sp to the use so if it normally takes two now it only takes one so you can sort of increase that to the point where like you're negative four or negative five SP. So now your super um, powerful spells aren't costing that much SP to use. So you can mm -hmm. use them more often. And eventually you get like you'll have skills that just don't use any SP at all because you have that mastery so high. Oh, that's cool. So that yeah, that I thought was cool. And I mean, and the game itself, after battles, you pretty much just refill. Like by the time you walk to another battle. Uh, like your HP and your SP will be filled up. Like it just sort of automatically refreshes. So mm -hmm. it sort of encourages using all of your skills in like even regular fights, which is cool. Um, now the problem is the game is painfully easy when you're fighting just random monsters, right? 
and Uh-oh. and even some of like like the more like mandatory fights not really that hard but the game just will spike up uh, on a few occasions one in particular which is about maybe three quarters of the way through the game um, and I had fair warning from David that he was like hey this is brutally tough make sure to level up your characters make sure to level all of your characters up and make sure to have like tanks <laughs> so it was like oh mm-hmm. man I did not do any like I haven't been sh- rotating characters, you know, and I right. I didn't really make any tanks because none of the enemies had hurt me at that point. So it's just all out attack essentially. Um so I was like, okay, let me grind up a little bit and level up these characters and I I probably grind for like 3 hours uh up Uh-oh. up to that part and then I still got messed up, you know. And um so essentially at this one point at this one point you split up your party and then you sort of go through like a little bit of a, a gauntlet of different enemies and then it, like a boss kind of thing. And I mm-hmm. got wrecked on like the final part of the gauntlet and from what I understand the boss is like 10 times as hard as that. So it was like it's just so weird that the game was so why? It, yeah, I don't know. It, it was so I don't want to say easy but like so I mean, not difficult, and then all of a sudden the spikes are just stupid high. I mean, is it possible that there's a component that you're missing to uh, strategy or to something? Well, see, there's you know I mean? there's also formations um, for your party, which, again, they don't really talk much on, and I didn't really use it at all up till, you know, that point in the game because you didn't need to. But, I mean, I, I set it up, okay, I had a tank, set up the tank, um... Had him in the front row, so he was taking the majority of the damage. Then you had, like, oh, I have a couple guys on the second row where they're getting plus um, stronger damage. And then I had one in the back row where it's like, oh, they have uh, 25% support, so they do more healing and stuff. And, and you still just get trashed. And, and it's like, oh. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine if I didn't do that three hours of grinding how bad. You know, I would have gotten clowned so hard. But, uh, right. I mean, I still got beaten up pretty good. But, I mean... To me, it's just like, it's it's just a frustrating game because there. To me, when I was playing it, I never like thought like, man, I'm not having a great time or I'm having a bad time. It was just like I'm enjoying this. This is this is good. You know, I'm having a good time going through here. Then you know, when I put it down, it'd be one of those. It's like I should play some more Alliance Alive, but I don't. You know, like it didn't have that that hook in you where it kept mm-hmm. bringing you back for more. Um, right. But, yeah, I mean... Well, the other thing is that this is not a Switch game. I don't, I don't know if you've mentioned, but this is a 3DS game. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I should have uh, led with that. Yeah, I, I guess... I, th- I think most people might have known that, but you're right. It, I should have... Uh, now, who plays the 3DS? I, exactly. And I've heard that it has a very weird use of 3D. Oh, it is so, so random when it uses 3D. Um, so... When you're playing the game, it doesn't use any 3D, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, all right, no 3D, that, whatever, you know, it's 2018, a lot of 3DS games don't use 3D, so, um, but then, like, when you're in some of the towns, it'll zoom out, and then sort of just give you, like, a grand view of the game, but then it kicks into 3D, and that little, like, just when it zooms out, it's like, (laughs) I'm like, wait, there is 3D, like, (laughs) and then, you pieces of snot, and I'm like, man, it looks great, yeah. And then you touch any button and it zooms back in, and you're like, ugh. Um, and then also, <laughs> randomly, sometimes in the the menus, like, there'll be some 3D. I'm like, this is so random. Like, I, I wonder how they dictated when 3D would be utilized. But um, I guess, yeah, to, to polish it off here, just touching now on the visuals, the game looks all right. You know, it's, um, you sort of have, like, I don't want to say, like, chibi people. You know what I mean? But, like, it's that sort of low polygon, you know. Chibish. Yeah, I guess sort of chibi-ish. Not, like, so exaggerated where it's like, oh, they're, like, the heads are half their body, you know. But it's sort of that, like, Mm -hmm. sort of what you'd come to expect from, like, a a 3D game or a 3D polygon game on the 3DS, you know. Yeah. But, no, it doesn't look visually bad. Um, There's no voice acting. no 3D. Which is sort of a bummer. Well, there, no, there is 3D, Perry. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do not sell it short. But uh, they didn't have to put they didn't have to put that on the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we checked Plays that box, 2D. baby. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, I mean, if you want to hear more about this game, uh, you should check out The Thirsty Mage, which is a RPG podcast hosted by David Lloyd. Um, myself, Neil, and Guillaume uh, jumped on to join David to talk about the Alliance Alive in sort of a review episode, spoiler-free. So uh, if you want to hear more about uh, the Alliance Alive, definitely should go check that out. And I, th- and I believe that's hosted over on the Connectivity uh, feed. It's uh, Well, I um, think... Um, right? I think only it's on both the main one, like a, a full fledged uh, David, I think, has decided to go m- weekly with his RPG podcast because he's a madman. Um, and yeah, you can check. Really? Yeah. So w- what he's going to do is have like smaller like this is a the first review episode. You know what I mean? So I th- it, think it was only yeah. about 45 minutes long. Um, and, it, you know, spoiler free. We didn't get too oh, into okay. any of that. So that, I think you have to look up uh, the Thirsty Mage on, you know, iTunes, Google Play, all that jazz I think he's on. So, um, gotcha. yeah, worth checking out. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting game. Well, speaking of interesting games that are worth checking out, uh, I'm going to talk about a game that just came out called Tesla vs. Lovecraft. <laughs> This is another twin stick shooter from our pals over at 10 Tons. Ooh, they love uh, them some twin stick shooters. They do, they do. Um, they've had some good ones. Neon Chrome was one of my favorite games of last year, um, which was like kind of like a roguelike take on that. Uh, then um, they also did uh, Time Recoil. That's the other one I played through, which I really, really liked. Um, and now we have Tesla vs. Versus- versus Lovecraft. I was going to say, there's a bunch of other ones, too, that I haven't played yet, which I, I plan the on. The Jeej? Um, Jeej. And uh, uh, there's the first one, and I forgot what it's called. But yeah, there's a, there's a bunch more. But uh, yeah, welcome back, Ten Tons. Uh, this is a uh, twin stick but shooter, but it's level-based now, so it's not, you don't start from the beginning. But it kind of has those qualities, um, in meaning a big, like, the whole part of the game is upgrades. Um, so every level, you kind of start from the basic, from the beginning. Just, you know, you just, you always start from, you know, you have one gun. Um, and then you play through levels and then upgrades, like guns will appear. Uh, and then uh, specials will, you know, like side weapons will appear. And you'll grab them and use them. And it's just endless, not endless, but it's like tons, waves of different types of enemies. Ten tons? on this map there's 10 tons of enemies <laughs> uh and so it's on this map sometimes it'll be like in the middle of a city sometimes it's in like a like a like a wilderness or i mean it, it's just a tons of different locations and uh you you play as tesla and the main hook of the game is there's a mech that you get um which everyone loves and likes mechs. Um, so what it is is uh, once you collect six of the mech parts that are on that are on the map, then at any time you press A to to get a mech, and you'll get this mech for like a brief amount of time that just destroys just everything. wreak havoc. I- <laughs> oh, it's so good! Like it's just you get two because then it has two super fast guns going at once, and you can and you can just plow over stuff and so that's one hook is the mech the other thing is you have this dash dash move so um you have unlimited dashes but you have to like i think you can do three at once and then it recharges to, for a second a cool down yep uh so you use that to get out of a pickle and stuff so uh you but you can go through walls you can go through anything it's like a te- it's more like a teleport actually is what it is it's not a dash um so you teleport you know to get away but then there's tons of different weapons if you've played neon chrome you would be very uh, you would know exactly, or or, or uh, time recoil. You know exactly the kinds of stuff. There's like really, there's shotguns. There's there's revolvers and pistols, and I mean there's everything. Um, you know, uh, Tommy guns. Now the thing is, is you're getting constant upgrades to yourself and to your weapons and stuff. So, in each level, so, and each level is about five or some minutes. So really quick, perfect pick up and play game. Uh, so each level you you like for instance uh, you like 
you'll level up. You're leveling up in every level, but like you're not, you don't carry that to the next level. So you always start like level zero, and then you know once you get enough experience points from shooting enough enemies, then you you can hit Y to upgrade your level, and uh, then you can pick from like one of two upgrades, and uh, like for instance, uh, thirty five percent more health, or uh, my favorite is uh, uh, another barrel to your gun, adding another bullet to every shoot, every shot that you do. So like if you have one gun that shoots, if you add a barrel, it'll do two, and it'll Ooh, kind of like those, make, split it, you know? I was going to say, those sound like the uh, the bread oh. makers right there. Well, yeah, think about it, because like then when you have like an automatic gun, oh, then you're you just, have like yeah, twice as many bullets, bullets always, and then flying you get shotguns that are just insane. Um and then the cool thing is all those upgrades apply to the mech, too. So when you get that mech, he already has two. So when you add one, it adds four, right? And I mean, like, you know, so if... But then you can keep getting those barrels. So you can have a gun with, like, five barrels oh, and then, you then go to it's... the mech. And it's, like, it's just... And then, like, you unlock all these crazy upgrades, like ricochet. Like, it makes them ricochet off walls. Um, so it's just, (laughs) and then, uh, you you get ones that like pierce enemies so that like you can go through enemies and take out other, other enemies. Um, uh, all this kind of stuff. I mean, and then, and then it almost sounds like it would become like a bullet hill. Oh, it is. It totally is. It's, it's insane. It definitely is. Uh, and then you get this part where like if you get your side weapons and like, for instance, one of them is I just try to think of one like lightning, like you can make lightning strike, or there's a, there's like an explosion. You know, you just kind of explode everything around you, or you like you throw this, this, I forgot what it's called, but it's kind of like a boomerang where you throw it out and it just kind of attacks a lot of enemies and comes back to you, or it kind of bounces off a wall. Mm-hmm. So you can throw those, um, and you get li- you get limited use of those, but you know you pick them up, and then uh, you know there's health packs, and so it's a very it's a very fun game, and it's really good for. Uh, for if you have like five ten minutes to do a level or two, uh, I really have enjoyed it, and you know, and it's good to sit down and play a lot. If you like twin stick shooters, this is like incredible. Um, but that's yeah, I, the, I always uh, like when you sort of have that option of like, oh, it, you can get it done in five minutes, but it's also susceptible to like, well, I could just play a bunch of these back to back, and it's not going to get you know boring or, right, or tired. Right, and like, and you know, like twin stick shooters, there's not a lot of level based twin stick shooters. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Tell that like, to and judge. there's tons, and there's tons of levels, tons of levels. So, um, and then I was talking with Justin Nation, who's a really big fan of this game as well, um, and he told me that like the, you know, uh, once you get, cause like so far it's been like doable. Like I am no twin stick shooter guy, and I can beat these levels. I've died a few times, like on the bosses, um, but that's it, you know. Uh, you know, so it's been it's been fairly easy, satisfying, but easy. Um, I was going to say there's no crazy of course, I was used to, level yeah, requirement yeah. for uh, passing no. on to the next level. No, I still don't understand. That's so weird. But uh, but yeah, so it's it's nice in that way. But apparently Justin was saying that it's it gets really hard and it, you know yeah towards the later and stuff. Yeah, but that's towards nice. Later, so. That's nice when you get like the okay, it's going to be easy enough for everyone to play, and then you know sort of ramp it up for yeah. the the people who really really love it. You know, have that challenge. Yeah, yeah, and the last point I'm going to make about this game is that I cannot tell you how much this game, how perfect it runs. It it does all that crazy enhancement, you know, stuff, and it, like, even with all that crazy ricocheting bullets with, like a, like, a billion bullets on the screen at once, it keeps, like, 60 frames. It's crazy. I've only seen it dip, like, just a very little bit when it, when there's, like, 10 billion explosions with them but the whole time it's playing amazing like no stutters at all and it's crazy i don't know it's 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 weird playing a twin stick shooter that's so insane that doesn't drop like that so it's you know what they've released so many games now on the switch it feels like maybe they're just getting to that point where they're really knowing how to optimize you know their games on the switch so that's a good sign moving forward too yeah yeah um but yes uh i believe so they uh, ten ton sent us both a code because they're so cool, so uh, I'm anxious for you to uh, play it and tell me what you think. Yep, yeah, I uh, I wanted to get Especially to since it since you've only had Judge. Yeah, I wanted to get to it this week. Um, 
but there's another game that we're going to be talking about in a minute. Well, ma- maybe more than a couple minutes from now. But uh, I that well, I'm talking about my other Switch game. But I do. Uh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, I can jump into my. Uh, is this back to back weeks of Nintendo? Nintendo. Nintendo. We had Fort Fortnite last week, and now we got uh, Nino Kuni Two: The Revenant Kingdom. Now, uh, Nino Kuni uh, was a game that came out for the PS3, and it got really, really great, um, you know, critical and I think fan response. Everyone loved that game, you know. And, and this is the RPG that was done by that uh, Mia's the, the studio, studio right? Ghibli. The anim- studio Ghibli. Yep, and them in level five. Uh, level five, yeah, it's so weird. So they, so that was uh, the team that worked on Nino Kuni, and like I said, from what I hear, it was a really great game. Um, I didn't have a PS3, so it was, I was sort of hoping they would do a remaster or re-release on the PS4, sort of like leading up to this one, you know? Like, it seemed yeah, like a lot of... they did Yeah, right? it seems like... Or like Switch release? Yeah, that or just like, even just a download only, you know? It, it seems like yeah. it could make sense, but uh, they did not, so, you know, I never got that game. Um, but this was on my radar. And it's funny because it was like being so involved with you know the Switch and everything. It's like I haven't had time to really stop and look at games like coming soon, especially on uh, you know other platforms. Mm-hmm. So I just was like, oh wow, Nino Kuni reviews are coming out, and it looks like they're getting pretty solid reviews, and it comes out in a couple days. Like, booyah, you know, I'm in. Let's do this. Yeah, I remember you saying to me like. It's so weird to be so late on the hype train. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I love it. <laughs> Fine, yeah, like, like instead oh, no, of like, I really want to play this game, and it comes out like now. Yeah, I only got to wait two days. Yeah, and then uh, then I all I had to do was show David just like one little thing, and he was on board. So um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> planning like a podcast series. He's like, it's and... an RPG. All right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so this game here uh, is weird. So it starts out. Um, you were like the president of some sort of country and you're driving around and then all of a sudden some some crazy like explosion or something happens and then next thing you know you're dropped into like through a portal into this room where you see this little uh, half human half cat person uh, I, what do they call him I forget uh, oh Grim Grim Cthulhu Grimaklin G R I M A L K I N Grimalkin Grimalkins Sure. Uh, which is like a cat. Li- so he's got like cat ears and a tail, you know. But he looks like a little. Mm-hmm. He actually looks like a little girl. His name is uh, what's his name here? Evan Periwhisker Tildrum. You said Perry. Uh, oh, excuse me, Petty Whisker. <laughs> Casey, I wish, are you thinking about me? I, I wish it was Perry Whisker. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you should call me. Yeah, that. <laughs> people might get the wrong idea. <laughs> Where's my Perry Whisker? <laughs> but oh Jesus! Um, but yeah, so you sort of get dropped in there, and then uh, you you really get thrown into this sort of crazy kingdom of uh, Ding Dong Dell, and they're being overturned by like the Mousekin people, and uh, they have what? they have killed your father and like sort of run poor Evan out of uh, out of the kingdom. So it's sort of your goal is like, uh, all right, we're going to build up our kingdom again and, um, you know, go from there. That's at least the part that I'm up to. Um, I'm about nine hours in, I think. And I think this game, I think it's sort of a brisk RPG. I think they said anywhere from like 30 to 40 hours. Um, so now how does this RPG play? So this game is um, an action RPG which is uh, quite different from the original, which was turn-based. So this is uh, very much you run into enemies, um, and then you just sort of, sort of like Xenoblade, they drop like the circle, uh, your you know your playing field, if you will, and then you just fight the enemies with um, like uh, you've got two buttons. They're sort of like a weak and a strong. You got a jump button, and then you have uh, if you hold down R R L R Z, whatever the the trigger R Z. Um, yeah, then R2. you have a few spells sort of mapped to your face buttons. Yeah, I guess it's not a... 
Yeah, I'm thinking the Switch controller. Um, mm-hmm. And then it sort of gives you spells on your face button. So, and obviously that uses uh, mana, and uh, you know you got to be weary of that. But so far the battles have not really been all that difficult. Um, some of the bosses are m- more tough because obviously they have a lot more health, and their their moves just do big damage. So like the the one boss. Um, it just like he and I don't even think he's necessarily like a unique boss as much as just like one of the bigger bads, you know, and he has like mm-hmm. one where he does like a spinning attack at you, but he does it like three or four times. So if you get caught in it, it you're going to take a ton of damage, you know, but uh, mm-hmm. what's nice is even if your character dies, you know, or, or falls in battle, you can just jump to one of the other characters and uh, the party size is three. So you can just whenever in battle, you just press like the down D button uh on the Mm d-pad you know and you just jump to the other characters which is really really nice i like that and uh interesting and each character sort of has their own weapon set so you know you've got like someone who's like oh like evan's got like a sword um and then he can also he has like a wand for his ranged attacks and then like then you have uh other characters i don't want to get into any names or anything but you know one that wields like a big hammer and axe one that has like more spears so they're a little quicker and more agile you know but they don't really do as much damage so it's fun to mix and match and to be able to switch on the fly i think is really nice Mm -hmm. um what is cool is uh just how great this game looks i mean uh studio ghibli actually is not working on this game um Okay. So, but the thing is, the character, it, it took the... the character designs, and I think they said the composer uh, from Studio Ghibli that worked on the first um, series or the first game in the series kept their roles in this one. So it still right, looks right. like like if you didn't know any better, uh, you would think it, it looks like a Studio Ghibli were still part of the team. You know, it has that really yeah, beautiful I mean, it, look. Yeah. Um, the a couple, I mean. All of the areas have looked really nice, but this one town, uh, I don't think it's really, it's called Gold Paw. Uh, I don't think that's really spoiling anything, but it's just really, re- yeah, <gasps> you blessed for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's really cool because it's just like, it's gorgeous. I, I There are, you know, checkpoints that you get throughout the, the world, um, including in towns where you could sort of fast travel to. But I would found myself just running through the town, even if I could just fast travel to the part that I needed, just because it was mm-hmm. so wonderful to look Pretty. at. And and the music in the in Goldpaw, if I I think I'm going to tell you to start that music with uh when you play the music for the podcast, it is so good. I, I love it. It um it's got like a mi- a very Japanese vibe, but mixed with Twin Peaks. Which I don't know. Okay. Have you ever watched Twin Peaks? No, but my cousins were on it. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, Isn't that funny? It's like I, I think anyone who's watched Twin Peaks will have an but idea. I know, I know of like, what it is. It's the David Lynch, and, and it's just like so cool. I I love it. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying the game so far. Um, like I said, I guess a little bit on the easy side as far as the combat goes, but you know, I think I'm still somewhat early enough that I'm looking forward to seeing how that ramps up. I should also yeah. mention that uh, two things real quick. There is just like a random um, change up of the battle system where like certain battles will just be like, oh, now you've got like a little army of units around your character, right? So you, you've you got mm-hmm. your character and then you have like four groups of different enemies around you and you use the L and R button to rotate them around you. And you just go mm-hmm. and fight little skirmishes with other people on like a world map, and you go around trying to take over like the that either eliminate all the enemies or get you know to the other side and capture you know a building or something, and uh, it's just so random, but it's a nice change up of pace. And then finally, there's mm-hmm. also actually kingdom building, um, as I alluded to before. That's sort of like the goal, at least for now, is like to sort of build up your kingdom. So uh, you actually recruit people from out in the world, and they will come to your town, and then you build more buildings, and then uh, you can use those residents to research stuff. So, you know, I've got, like, um, a blacksmith, and you need to level it up, and you use resources, and you need manpower, and a certain IQ each uh, each um, 
citizen has an IQ level, and some are like, oh, it, like they're a, a blacksmith, so their IQ is going to be higher in that. So you want to put them with the you know in the blacksmith area, so then you get the bigger boost, and it'll be easier to upgrade and stuff. So it's a uh, pretty cool. Right. And like I find the the side quests are fun to you know go out there and sort of help these people, and then you're rewarded with them coming back to your little city or your kingdom, you know, and it, it's fun to see that grow. I I just sort of unlocked that part, and uh, I haven't done like a ton with it yet, so I don't know how deep it will get, but it it seems pretty interesting so far. Sounds so ever oasis -y. Yeah, so you've got that little element in there, so uh, it's got a little bit of everything, and. I'm uh, thoroughly enjoying it so far. Yeah? Well, good. I wish it was well, for the Switch, though. I know. I've never heard that said on this podcast. <laughs> or anywhere, ever. Yep, yep. I, I don't know if they have uh, a deal with Sony. I know it, you know, uh, releases on Steam as well. So I know it's not, you know, a Sony exclusive, but it might be like a Sony console exclusive. I don't know, um what the deal is, if there's might be hope for it to come out on the Switch one day or not. Uh, I mean, I know Level 5, and also your publishers, you've got uh, Bandai Namco, so obviously... Uh, They're very close. Yeah, close with Nintendo, but yeah, I don't... Making I, the next Metro. Yeah, I don't know if there's some sort of, uh, sort of uh, deal behind doors that I'm not aware of, but I would love to one day see it come to the Switch, but until then... Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Till then, he'll play it on your PS4 like a gym. Yep. I'll be stuck to my TV. Well, speaking of PS4s, uh, we've both been playing a game uh, that has nothing to do with the PS4. Sure doesn't. Nope. And <laughs> that game is Shadow Bug. <laughs> I don't think you could possibly play this on the PS4 if you wanted to, with the control schemes. Yeah, I don't know. I have not played this on... Have you played this on the, uh, the dock? I sure have. Oh, you have? Okay, good. I was hoping you had, because I haven't. Now, I'll go ahead and talk about what it is. So, Shadowbug. Um, this is an obvious <laughs> I iOS port game. But it's really cool. And I know you don't really hear those two things. Yeah, yeah, usually that much. <laughs> iOS port, you're like, oh, no. Ugh. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, so this is like a little, I would call it an action platformer. I think that's safe to say. I mean, you don't jump, okay, but you play as this little ninja bug guy. Uh, he must be a bug, right? Yeah, that's why yeah. It's called Shadow Bug. And it's just kind of like the Donkey Kong uh, country silhouette levels or the uh, limbo or, you know, everything in the foreground is black. Oh, but the, but the background is gorgeous. They're, they are so good looking. It's ridiculous. They are. They're really cool. I mean, like, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's almost like Asian It's like whimsical. Hyper detail, like, paintings. Um, and, and they do change whenever, wherever you're, uh, when you're going. But yeah, so gorgeous background. It's a really pretty game. I mean, really pretty. Uh, and they really, it's funny because you think about like for production wise, that makes it so easy to make everything in the foreground black. Like you don't have to design them at all. You can. You, yeah, you just you know, need shapes. It's a good way to get. Although they, it's a good way. It's like just make a really nice looking background, and then you don't even need. I'd say they put some decent detail in the foreground objects no, no. too, though. There's amazing yeah. detail. No, there is. I'm just no, saying, no, like, yeah, the yeah, to get away with yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, so what it is, is you can play this game all touch, and actually it's not a bad game to play all touch. Um, how I've been playing this game, and I think this is the most comfortable way, uh, as long as you can like rest your Switch on like something, but I've been playing it like with my left hand on the Switch doing the uh, analog stick with my thumb, and then just using the right hand to tap on the screen. So... The way that works is why you're tapping is because the way you attack things is you just you just tap them. A tap, so a tap, see, a tap. -a. Tap, a tap, a tap. -a. You just tap the uh, the enemies and your ninja. No matter where they are, like you can tap them anywhere on the screen. He, the shadow bug guy, will fly through the wall and uh, and do the sweet ninja slash and kill him. Um, and that's how you 
traverse throughout the level. Now, I mean, you can move left and right with with the analog stick, or if you, it's kind of cool if you press the left side of the screen, like literally the left side of the screen anywhere. That's how I was doing right. uh, when I was doing touch yeah. control. I sort of yeah, I did that at first, and it's not bad. I, you know what? I was in my car. So, <laughs> let me draw this, uh, paint this picture here. So I had my seat all okay. the way leaned back, right? So it's almost horizontal, mm-hmm. and I was on my stomach facing okay. the back seat. So like my head was like over the headrest. It, it, is that you get get what you, you get what I'm putting down right now? Oh yeah, I'm I'm slurping up what so, you're spitting out. Boo. Uh, so I had like a sweatshirt back there, and I would I just rest the switch on it, and then I just like I had my left hand and my right, and I would just like my pointer on each side. You know what I mean? So like if I needed mm-hmm. to move to the left, I just use my left finger, and if I was moving to the right, the right, and it was sort of uh, easier than holding it. Although I didn't yeah. I didn't think of using the right stick and then in conjunction with touch controls. I think that probably would have worked. Better. I know it's it's really cool because I mean then you can just worry about all movement with your left finger with your thumb and then you can do all the tapping with your right hand so um and it works really well and now how have you played it uh docked how does it work docked because wonderfully now let me uh so you you can only play you got to pop the joy cons out right because when it is docked it Uh... is motion control oh so what you do is you use like sort of uh like you were saying you use the left joy con to do the moving around left and right um, and then you mm-hmm. use pointer controls with the right Joy-Con, and I believe it is um, X. It might be Y, but I think it's X. Always resets the pointer right to the middle of the screen. So Or Y. It's Y. I is it Y? Okay. So that resets you right yeah. to the middle of the screen. So it's nice because the 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 control actually works pretty well, you know, where you want to point. Really? So it's like Wii. Is it like Wii? Like yeah. Wii yeah, essentially. Control? And since, you know, there it's not like requiring you to be super duper precise and super duper quick about it. There are some quick, uh, you know, points where you sort of, uh, are chaining together. Like Perry said, it almost reminds me a little bit of, uh, Scepter Knight. Nope. Plague Knight from, uh, no. Yeah. Scepter Knight. Yeah. Right? I'm forgetting. No, there's, there's no Scepter Knight. Which one is the one with the scythe? Um, is that uh, Plague Knight? Yeah. Uh, that's Plague Knight, yes. The one where you sort of fly through the air? No, when... that's not No, Plague that Knight. Plague Knight is the one you Plague... throw the... Spectre. S- yeah, Spectre. See, you said Scepter. Uh, potato, potato. No. Well, that was throwing me <laughs> off know, like I crazy. Know. Uh, so it's sort of like that where when you're in the air, you could be falling down, but if you click on another enemy, you still shoot up to it. So they have points where it's sort of like a, a diagonal line of enemies to, to you know, oh, you got to click them all and sort of keep climbing higher which can be a little tricky but even yeah. so i didn't uh really have any problem with the motion controls doing that it, it felt good um that's cool like man. honestly I, yeah, that would be fun i think i liked it better than handheld with touch control now granted Ooh, that's always good to know i should say i did not try that with like the the touch with conjunction of the left and right stick i mean or the left uh stick to move left and right i think sure. that would have felt better than what i was doing but uh, no, motion control uh, was actually very nice. Cool. Um, yeah, and so you start the game, and it's all in levels. It's very mobile-like. I mean, isn't it funny how all mobile levels have – they have that, like, weird – like, every single mobile game has the same menu system <laughs> with, like, the levels with the big play sign on them, the big circle, and then, like, the the scores with, like, the, the circle with the the – trophy in it and like gotta, it gotta be you know, nice you, you and get big like your, to push that button with your finger yeah yeah it's just yeah and so um yeah so you got all these levels and you make it through there's some cool fun bosses and you know as i was playing it through i was like okay this is kind of cool i mean all the levels are are very samey looking because it's like the same background at the beginning in the world they change every world so i was like you know this is a fun it feels good but like the 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 gameplay isn't like really that dynamic but I'm really, as I make my way further into the game, uh, I just got to the third world, and you get like there's like locks and stuff, and so like you have to like unlock doors by find like going throughout the environment and then like you know doing certain things to unlock. And there's like puzzles, like it's it's this is getting into puzzle form territory. Yep, case. yep. Yeah, I know. In the second world, they introduce uh, like levers, so you need to push the yeah. lever to move things and. 
it's not literally just like, oh, you push this lever lever and you're done. I mean, there are instances where that's the case, but they, mm-hmm. they do have some, like you said, puzzle where it's like, oh, I need to move this lever, I need to move that lever, jump down here, shoot over there, then move that original lever back so now I can fall the way through, you know? So there are, yeah. like you said, there are little, some light puzzle elements, which I think uh, was sort of a, a welcome, like you said, to keep it from getting too monotonous. Absolutely. So, I I think it's a really cool game. Uh, I, you know, I I don't know exactly what the price is going to be. I, th- I think, think it's I saw that it was um seven ninety nine. Oh yeah, eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. Yeah. There um, are boss fights which were sort of cool too. Yeah, yeah. I the second boss fight was really. F- I mean, they were all pretty fun, pretty hard. You know, like yeah, they're they're the not easy. Ramps up pretty good. Yeah. Um. So and they also we should say uh, online leaderboards. So uh, the game sort of judges you for, at least for the online leaderboards. It's time, but there are three yeah, elements. Yeah. Um, sort of just beating the level, you get like a what are they like a shurugan they throw? Shurugan. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love it. It's a sure. I know you love that. <laughs> I know I do. Love um, it. But yeah, so it's like essentially you can earn up to three per level. And uh, based on time, and if you collect enough of these sort of floating orbs, that yeah, there's are also the level. like collectathon type stuff, and there's like secret areas to get more. Yeah, and, so yeah. there's um, some fun there. But I thought the leaderboards were cool. Um, the one level, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn here, but I'm currently sixth in the world. Now we should point Ooh. out that the game has not released yet. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but I do want to say that Perry's like that the, the time on that level. Uh, I got, like, five seconds, because there's, like, a total, if you catch it early, you can jump through and, like, get really close to the end of the level instead of sort of sneaking around. So Perry's at, like, a minute 30, and I'm at five seconds, (laughs) and I was going to post it on Twitter, just like, look at this Jimmy, (laughs) but I was like, I don't know if I'm not allowed to show that yet. You should. I I will. uh, Once the game releases, I'll I'll show it right off the bat so everyone can see. Did you take a picture? Oh, yeah. Of course, oh. I got that puppy safe for life. <laughs> you can take any if you can take any pot shot yeah, at dude, me. You will. That's going to my tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Sixth in the world, <laughs> pre-launch. <laughs> no, but like the whole thing is, it's not that. It's that I was at a minute thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're you're gonna circle my yeah, time. Yeah, they're like, oh wow, an arrow at sixth, it. pretty good. Ca- Look at who's 33. <laughs> no, no, like, like not even post that you were, like, oh, your it's time just isn't your even time. on there. It's just my time. <laughs> <sighs> oh, goodness. But, yes, that's Shadow Bug. Uh, it's coming out soon. Uh, it'll be, it, it'll be out by the time you hear this here. Well, I should lie. I'm lying. You'll see it one day okay. after this puppy posts. A, a, right. a strange well, we Friday release. For the for the old eShop. And you'll definitely see it on the eShop roundup this Yeet. week. Oh. And speaking of that, that was a pretty good uh We're, we're getting good at this. It only took 79 episodes, but we're getting all right yep. at this thing. And we've had a couple good segues. Just yeah. a couple. We, well, you know what? Been it's there. sort of like uh, it too too much of a good thing. You know, we don't want to spoil the good segues. Oh, yeah. So we got to get the, yeah. the crappy ones in there so that when we really nail that one, People are like, whoa, they're on it. They're on tonight. And we'll be like, yes, Wait, we what were. Do you, what do you mean by crappy ones? We put a little uh, asterisk next to each episode with a good um, a good segue, and I think we might be up to four now. All right. Wonderful. Well, on that now, note, <laughs> let's uh, take a quick break, and when we come back, it's what we just talked about, the eShop Roundup. back I, I can't believe it whoo i didn't think we'd make it me either the the good news is though there are not i should say I quote unquote, not that many games but really in relation to what we've been you know i don't want to say yeah uh, the pleasure of uh, there's too many games <laughs> yeah, there's 13 new games this week one of them and then another one which is not really a game per se but we'll get to that and, and here we are talking about how it's a light week Yep. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Remember, like, back in the good old Wii U days? 
back when we literally had two things. I was I was going to say literally like this would have been like the entire week or maybe like two episodes worth of games. In you know what I mean for both the 3DS, oh, the yeah. Wii U. Uh, woo. I know. What Isn't a time crazy? to be alive. I know. So we're going to start it off with, you know, just so everyone can breathe a sigh of relief. We got the Arcade Archives Neo Geo World Heroes 2 Jet. Man, for seven ninety nine. I am so relieved. I, I thank you. You know, I I, I thank the eShop gods for putting this one up first. So, to sometimes you know suspense is nice, but when mm-hmm. it comes to the eShop roundup, man, give me those Neo Geos early so I know we're good I to know. go. And and then this one, divine power lies within the fists. Find yourself in an extreme battle world. Mm. Even though there's a woman with a huge sword. I really like uh, that. Like they just added the word "jet" to the end of the title there. I don't. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know I if that really. It's a sequel to that. I don't know. I if also it, like mm. one of the levels takes place at a champion carnival. <laughs> I, I'm liking all these backgrounds. Like this one, I'm looking. It's like <laughs> they're at like some sort of castle with like the guards yeah. are watching. That guy. Yeah. The guy's showing his underwear. Yeah, he's doing like the most. Amazing standing split of all time. It's the Ganondorf kick from Smash. Yes. It takes five seconds. Yes, That's what exactly. he's doing. And then, but then you look at the next one, and it's like, oh, it looks like you're on some sort look of boat. that guy. And uh, the, the other boat's crazy. on fire. Yeah, this is a, looks like an interesting one. Anyway, let's move on. Moving to along. To the next game. We've got a game with an interesting name, and that is Sol Divide. I like to call it SOL Divide. So, yeah, SOL Divide. <laughs> Shit out of luck divide. Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> Sol Divide, Sword of Darkness for Nintendo Switch. I'm going to censor that in some really funny way. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> for $7.99. Yes. Now, this game, if we were giving out our, our patented Jimmy Awards, this one what? would get it for the name. What is it? Do you see the blurry, blurry screenshots? Yeah. I, what is this, this must, game? This must be like a re-release of an older game or something. Uh, well, yeah. Psycho is coming back. <laughs> Those weird Psycho things. Now, I need to, I need you to know that in order to see the full name of what this game was, I had to go. I had to press the proceed to purchase button on my Switch mm. so that it would show it. So I thought I'd just let you know. What I go through because it was go, so what? long the title that it, you couldn't see the price is that why yeah okay yep yep another well, one I, same thing happened, I was just gonna yeah. say that that might be a, a theme for this week's eShop yeah I know because the next one we have is Opus Rocket of Whispers <laughs> for eight nine <laughs> eight ninety nine Rocket of Whispers I tell you, what what what's this it looks like an adventure game um. Graphically, yeah, it, it, I like the aesthetic. I it's mean, cool, yeah. it's not uh, anything you know groundbreaking, it's snowy. but I think it looks nice. Yeah, w- we are suckers for snow. We that are suckers be, for uh, desert and snow, aren't we? Yeah, we, yeah. Those I are. Really, I really do. Yeah, it looks like um, I don't know. There's a story, explore, build. Looks like there might be more than just a you know a, a standard quote unquote adventure game, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. If that interests you, eight ninety nine. Yep. And this next one is insane. Eat uh, bear, dead spike, son. Son, Mister Dead Spike. So Actually, it's not bear. It's beat. <laughs> eat bear. No. <laughs> eat beat dead spike. Well, I'll son. tell you what. Somebody put a typo then, right then there in the uh, the old show notes, making why me look you like say, a Jimmy. Why don't you just say who did it? Well. It wasn't me. <laughs> Who was it then, Casey? It was Perry Son. That's what I thought. Yeah, I'll fess up to it. <laughs> Eat beat dead spike son. This is a a. It's from Arc System Works and it's a rhythm game, and it looks insane. And there's a demo for it, and it's six ninety nine. I I almost wonder what that game could have been if it was well, Eat Bear. Well, listen to this. Yeah. It's a rhythm action game spinoff of the 2D fighting game series Blaze Blue. Hmm. Isn't that weird that I've never heard of this? And Blaze Blue is pretty big. Yeah. But there's a demo, free demo, so check that out. That's 
weird looking. Free demo, now, man. Nothing wrong with that. speaking of weird looking, this next game looks so awesome, and it looks super old. I love the colors. Oh, man. It looks so good. This is from 1982. That's like 36 years. That's an old baby. 36 years, Casey. <clears throat> That's older than I am. Goodness. And this game is Moon Patrol. This is an arcade archive from Hamster. Moon Patrol for $7.99. And I believe I saw Jason Cirillo of, uh, of, uh, not Gaijin. Choice I say Provisions. Choice Provision Games. Uh, I think he said, like, he mentioned, like, this was, like, the, like, one of the inspirations thanks inspirations thank you thank you for, for <laughs> telling me all these words for uh let me construct that sentence uh, for you perry <laughs> for uh what's the game called now space dave no Bo dave no that the beat tr dave beat, dave the beat series elite beat agents the runner bit trip runner oh bit trip Thank you. Yep. Yes. Yeah. This is inspiration. I'm sorry for that last 45 <laughs> seconds of your life, everyone. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> did you just have a stroke, Perry? <laughs> I think I did. Let me drink some water. Yes, it, it, but, here uh, we got Moon Patrol is a side-scrolling action shooter game released by RM in 1982. C control a lunar rover as you jump to avoid obstacles and move forward while defeating enemies that shoot missiles from above or rockets towards you. The goal is to make it through the beginner course and to the champion course. But yeah, you, the, the colors are so like cheesy, Old. but like amazing, you know? It's yeah. like, it looks like you got like a little alien city or something in the background, but it's just like green blobs with little black windows. And you're like, oh, I guess that maybe is some sort of alien town or moon. Mm -hmm. uh, did it say, are you on the moon? Yeah, well, moon patrol. I hope so. Why do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if it was like Mars or something, but yeah, sh shut up, strokey. <laughs> I love how you're like, oh, moon patrol, I hope they're yeah. on the moon. <laughs> oh no, that's the end of the game. Yeah, you oh, found no. out. We just patrolled Mars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were doing good till you were on the wrong planet. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's It's sort of interesting, to... I won't lie. Too bad it's I know. $7.99. I know, that's kind of big for that, but. Anyway, let's move on to this next game, which is Slay Away Camp Butcher's Cut for uh, fourteen ninety nine. It's so funny it, the Nintendo the Nintendo site makes you log in because it's rated M, and then you see the graphics. Yeah, I was and it's expecting just like something. Voxel. Yeah, it looks like yeah, Minecraft. It kind of, it kind of looks like uh, actually it reminds me a lot of of uh, Totes the Goat. Yes, thank. You. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot think right now, but yeah, this is uh, they touting itself as the most violentest puzzle game ever made. Um, it's a killer puzzle game where you control Skullface, a uh, psychotic slasher hell bent on revenge. So, looks interesting. I know we have a review up on old NintendoWorldReport.com, so check it out if that sounds cool to you. But let's move on. Next up, we've got Gaikido Kintaro's Revenge. For fourteen ninety nine. Now this it's a game, timeless classic. It is another fighting game, right? Uh, as yeah. if the Switch didn't already have enough. Ooh, this is a cool looking fighting. Yeah, game. no, it actually does look. I cool. like it. A um, lot of uh, like really detailed backgrounds. And, yeah, like, very spells very well done. Going on sprite work. Yeah, for fourteen ninety nine. Yes, sir. So. And you can play right. two players simultaneously. No way. <laughs> Um, I would hope no way, so. <laughs> speaking of no way, no thing. That's the next game. It's called No Thing for $1.99, which I don't see that price very often. The year is 1994, and it is the future. Oh, man. No I'm Thing is the, a uh, minimal, minimal, wow, minimalistic, surreal action game set in a totalitarianism re regime of the future this right. tells the story of an office clerk <laughs> who is sent with an important mission to the queen of ice <laughs> <laughs> i think i need to get this game <laughs> it, it looks it interesting it, radical gameplay <laughs> are you seeing these screenshots uh yeah and it's it's funny because i was thinking 
This game looks migraine inducing, and that's one of the features. It's migraine inducing. <laughs> does it really? It, it does that. say that. It says that. Yeah, it looks like um, think of like an Et Etrian Odyssey sort of first person. It looks like maybe you're walking along like a straight thing, but then all of a sudden you've got like weird holographic faces and people coming at you, or uh, mm -hmm. and and everything's like one shade of a color. I believe L Lemonade got this, yeah, so we should ask him what it's like. Yeah, it looks Lemonade. Looks what's it like? Yeah. Toma, dang it. Yep. Uh, Next up right. here, we've got Castle of Heart for fourteen ninety nine, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, that's right. This game looks sort of cool. Um, looks like an yeah. action it's platformer exclusive for the Switch. sort of thing. Uh, like a, I don't know. Classic action platformer at the genre's best, huh? Looks that's pretty a... <laughs> cool. Um, interesting. Yeah, I've heard like so so things about it, but it does. It looks like there's a lot of effort put into it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Kind of reminds me of uh, of uh, Dark Souls. Yeah, it sort know. of has that aesthetic going for it. Yeah. But next up we have D slash Generation HD, <laughs> which is a great title to have an HD treatment so <laughs> that HD can be put after it. Um, and uh, it says hours after receiving an urgent call in his Paris apartment. Two Which R's. Paris is, is spelled wrong. <laughs> the protagonist of D slash Generation, a nameless courier, arrives in London via his jetpack, touching down on the 80th floor of Genoc Gen Bio Labs Medical Research Facility. All right. Anyway. With an important so, package uh, for the lead Gen Co uh, scientist Gen Paul Deradia. Now that is a long sentence. That yes. was all one sentence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I man. know. And I was hoping it would tell me something about the gameplay. Oh my god, man! I tell you what, they wrote a novel though. Oh, you're right. Oh, <laughs> look at that! That's the biggest description of any game I've ever seen. Should we read the whole thing? Here, the gameplay of Degeneration consists of traversing interconnected rooms called scenes within the game, Accomp accomplishing various tasks within them in order to ascend to the next level of the tower. Okay, there we go. There so it's, go. A, it's a level-based, isometric Climb game. Climb that tower, baby. Nine ninety-nine. Next up Looks here, we've got Warp Shift, also mm -hmm. for nine ninety-nine. And now this mm. is a cool-looking little puzzle game. Um, yeah. Looks like you got uh, it's, it's the sort Hollywood of, Square. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say it looks like a tic-tac-toe board. Um, hmm. But it's, but with this little woman, like girl character. And your it's some sort of little it's a girl game, pie so. and her magical looks companion cool. through maze like confines. Yeah, looks. Her name is Pie. I could go for some pie. Not her, Me you too. pervert. What's your favorite kind of pie? Um, hmm. I'd probably go good old fashioned apple pie, but I well. My Just mom depending, makes a, a chocolate mousse pie. Yeah. That is my absolute favorite. But like to me, it's. Like, I don't know if that's really a pie. Yeah, I'd say, let's just say favorite fruit pie. Because, like, yeah, because, like, the chocolate like, mousse well, what's is your favorite? Oh, what's your favorite fruit You got to go with the old, uh, the timeless classic apple pie. Apple? Warm apple pie, mm. side of vanilla ice cream. See, here's the thing. I mean, it's like cherry pie is delicious, peach pie is delicious, and strawberry pie. Oh. You want to know something? I'll come clean. I don't think I've ever had pie. any of those pies. I think I might have. Oh my I think goodness. I've only had an apple pie. <gasps> uh, I think I've okay. had like. Well, that's okay, but we need to rectify that. So. I think I've had like those little like snack ones, you know. But those are no true pies, you know. Okay, we'll, we'll eat some pies in Boston. Yeah. We're Boston going, cream pie. Yeah, we're going. We're going pie hunting. Forget packs. Yeah. <laughs> All those appointments. Everyone's waiting in line to play Nintendo games, and we're just waiting to pick up our cobblers. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. Okay, now next game. We have three more. Uh, uh, all right. And this Clear next your one is for one this one that I also had to <laughs> proceed to purchase on to see the name, and that's Atelier L Liddy and Suell, the Alchemists and the Mysterious Paintings. Whew. For fifty nine ninety nine, even even the the price was long. Yeah, there. Uh, this is a. I wonder. Yeah, you could buy a physical. This did come out physically, 
So uh, it's so funny. It is a retail this physical release. game. Super big. There's only one screenshot, and it's just the. I know, just like the standard. Probably <laughs> you don't even know the, what it is. Yeah. Uh, I s- what kind of game is it's it? It's an RPG, I believe. Oh, okay. of some yep, sort. It says RPG. Interesting. Koi Tecmo. All right. And Koi Tecmo. to wrap us up here, our final game. Yep. Outlast Two. For twenty nine yeah. ninety nine. Now, of course, I talked about Outlast. Uh, I gotta say, you, you must be interested in this, right? Well, I'll be honest. Uh, I played this game on the PC a little bit. Um, Sandy and I actually bought it to play, and I don't know. It just didn't grab me. Um, it's oh, the second one. Yeah, uh, we played through the first one on the uh, on the PC way back in the day, and then I replayed it for the Switch. Um, and then I played a little bit of the beginning of this one. Maybe like an hour or so, and it, mm-hmm. it's more like to me what I thought was cool about the first one was like the environment. I mean, like the asylum with like you know like all these crazy things going on and experiments. This one's more like revolved around a, a cult of some sort, and I don't know. Yeah. It just didn't grab me. Screenshots as, look pretty freaky. What's up? Oh, I, I had screenshots look freaky. It was definitely weird, and from uh, at least the beginning parts, you're outdoors a lot. Um, and that's always mm-hmm. scary, you know, in a <laughs> mm-hmm. in these games. Um, you know, I I would I should give it a, a another shake because I really do like the first one. But like I said, it's something about like the whole it being a cult of some sort. Just it didn't grab me quite as much as like trying to uncover what was going on in that asylum, gotcha. you know. But gotcha. from all means, um, John uh, said it's a very good port um, of a, yeah. a good game, like a you know, a solid game, not like a fantastic game. So, mm-hmm. cool. But hey, well, more scary the... goodness is uh, good by me. Yep. Uh, the last thing we have here is the Arms Global Test Punch. It's back, uh, and uh, and I, yeah. You keep going. I'll I'll get the background music. Sorry, I was doing the background. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh man. You know what? We should have had the best soundtrack awards because I think that it would have gone to Arms. Oh yeah, it really so is good. really such really a good, good theme. Such a good theme. Anyway, the uh, test punch is coming back uh, Friday, March thirtieth through Monday, April second. So the Easter weekend. Uh. It's going to be going, so you can play ARMS for free, everyone. And it's the uh, full game, I believe, right? No. Well, it should be. I don't think so. Uh, well, isn't it pretty much... I mean, I guess it's I mean, it's the uh, full online experience. Yeah, I mean, you can... Yeah, I mean, you can do... Yeah, it's a, it's a very full experience. I don't think you can yeah. play every level and stuff, you know, you want. But, yes, very cool. Check that out again, March 30th through April 2nd. Um, but... That'll be it for the eShop Roundup. Can you believe it? That was a shorty. That was pretty it good. It was weird. Yeah, but I'm used to all... I, we need double the games, please. Mm-hmm. No. Just kidding. It. No, we don't. Don't worry. But a couple of those need, titles uh, made up for the lack of games. So. What we do need, Casey, is some news. News Talk with Casey Gibson. Yes, sir. Now, um, hmm, I'm looking here. Mediocre week. I feel like we haven't had a real hearty, hearty <laughs> news of uh, week soon. You know, what's up? Mediocre. I was laughing. You said mediocre. Actually, there are two things in this, th- in this, uh, in this news that literally are my dreams come true. So yeah. I sh- okay. It's a peri packed news block. Here we go. Kicking us <laughs> off. Super Smash Brothers Invitational Plus. The Splatoon 2 World Championships will be at E3 this year. Um, I think that makes sense. Sounds cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, the Smash tournament makes sense because they're going to be showing it there's off. there's no arms. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but this is going to be the new game of Super Smash Bros. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Like, I am, pu- I am so yeah, that, pumped for that. That's going to be the brand new game. Uh, makes sense. Oh, wow. Invitational, so they're going to be, you know, I'm sure inviting a mix of influencers and professional players kind of thing. So that it should word, be influencers. Influencers. That's so funny. You know, y- y- aren't we all influencers? Yeah. 
I guess so. You could. Uh, you know what I'm thinking though. Like, think about how how excited Nintendo is to finally. It's like think about how big Super Smash Bros. is, and the only thing they've had to use is the Wii U version, and it's been a good. It's a great version, but it's like I bet they're so happy to be able to not use that anymore oh. and use it on Switch and push the Switch and stuff. Absolutely, especially oh, um, now that they are sponsoring these big Smash tournaments, you know. Yeah. Um, so of course it's like they want to push their newest hardware. So it's like yeah, they don't want to be like oh for Wii U. So it totally makes it's sense. It's gonna be insane. I mean, like how cool. Like it's gonna be so easy to like you know to test and and to to practice like right before like you know just waiting and stuff like that, playing. Like it's gonna be crazy, dude. E three is gonna be great for for that. But I guess not this year because they won't have it this year. But well, next won't year, have what? Oh, oh, Smash Online, have, you mean? Yeah, people won't yeah. have it unless they announce it. Oh, <laughs> they didn't please say, don't do that, say, Nintendo. They didn't say winter. They just said 2018. And it's out right now. Right now. <laughs> in stores. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I'm excited for that. Um, I think, like I said, my... Splatoon 2 also. It sounds cool. My, my, hint, my uh, feeling for Smash is that... It's going to be a little bit more. I'm not gonna. I'm not saying it's gonna be solely for the tournament scene and like all of a sudden they're just gonna abandon you know items and fun play. But I definitely think they're going to tune the game so that it will be the the hype moment on uh, Evo. You know, because when you look yeah, at man. like you look at Evo's lineup this year, uh, Sunday's always the big day, right? So you got your Street Fighter game, you know, and all that kind of stuff. You know, the the big ticket items and smash uh melee is on Mm -hmm. sunday you know and i believe uh wii u is on saturday so it's like i think nintendo wants that switch to be that hype sunday Mm -hmm. when everyone's watching everyone's watching them play switch so i think uh i think it's going to be a little bit more i it's not melee hd or anything you know but i think it is going to be a little bit more of that like has the technical uh Meta game that can be sort of pushed to be really fun to watch competitively, and uh, I think mm-hmm. that's going to be super great. Dude, so good! I cannot wait. And do, although, don't you think it's weird to have invitationals to brand new games? Like that's I guess. How do they but, play it? You know what I mean? I, I think they probably. I think I remember because um, didn't they do that for the Wii U version as well? They they sure did. So I, I, I just thought that's so weird. They probably fly all these people out um, a night. You know. Not obviously the day of the tournament, but probably, you know, a couple days before, and they probably like, hey, we're going to meet up uh, the night before, and you'll have three or four hours, and you, you all can play it together kind of thing. And so, so you're weird, not, like, completely you know? in the dark when you go play it in front yeah. of a bunch of people. But, yeah, I mean, it everyone's going to be limited, but you also got to imagine the people they're inviting... I mean, I guess some of them, if they're, like, YouTubers, might not be the greatest gamer, but, like, if they're inviting mm-hmm. professional players, you know, like, they'll be able to figure it out. To a point where it's still going to be right. fun to watch, right? But yep. Anyway, let's move on to the more exciting. Yeah. Games. Now, now here we go. This, uh, this is part well, yeah. one of Perry's dream. Yeah. So we should prelude this by saying they filed a bunch. Nintendo filed a bunch of trademarks. Okay. Like, and all for the games that they just announced at the last direct, like Luigi's Mansion, all these new trademarks for stuff, WarioWare, all that, and. One of them, though, was not a game announced on the Direct, and that is Wario Land. Ooh. They trademarked it. So do you think Shake It's coming to Switch? Wario or do you think it's a brand new Land. One? Shake It for the Nintendo 3DS, baby. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, that would be awesome. It would, but but, but no 3D. It it, it's 2D it only. Though. Oh, kill me, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I th- I think that I could just see your face when like they announce all that from going from like the yeah. biggest smile in the world like the big, to, to like, like tears running shocked. down your face, <gasps> the yeah. thousand yard stare. You're like I'd still get it, dude. Anything Wario is me, but uh, yeah, I'm so pumped about it. now. I do think it is Shake It HD. I think that that makes so much sense. It really I would think, or Shake It Deluxe. You know, I just because that game first of all deserves it looks so new, good. It, it looks so good, and it deserves that. Like, it's one of those games where you know that it would had to be, like, because it's all art. 
it's all hand drawn, so it had to be like compressed to fit on the Wii, you know, where it it would look so much better and all the weird Wario anime. Oh, and I'm thinking I love that like game. the, what a great the Joy Cons should be able to do any of the movement that you would need, you oh, know, yeah. like motion wise. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I, mean, I think I think the Pro Controller could do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's like true. I, yeah, any yeah, yeah, any of the giant. You know what I mean? There. So I I because yeah, there's a lot of like tilting it and aiming and stuff, but uh, that could also be mapped to the uh, analog stick, I'm sure. But actually, I liked the uh, the the motion was good in that game. I mean, the shake it, I thought it was fun, right? I thought it was. Yeah, like, it wasn't like it, it, tedious. It was part of the, it was part of the. Uh, Cause it, yeah, because it was when you like grab the you, chest and stuff. Yeah, so it was like, like you, you feel like you're shaking it. You know what I mean? Like you really feel like you're shaking it. Like, I'm it's really so feeling it. Grabs it. an enemy. Yep, and you're shaking coins out of. I'm really people, shaking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but very very excited for that. So we'll see how that pans out. But I hope it's a. Uh, See, I just don't know if it's a if it's a Wario E3 Land thing? touched for the iPhone. See, I, feel, I just oh man, <laughs> actually that would be pretty cool. Anyway, let's not talk about iPhone or 3ds's. Let's nope. talk about this next thing. Yeah, let's take. We're gonna take a breather from uh you know from part two. You know we don't want to give Perry too much uh, excitement overload, so we're gonna pepper in a little something here. Third party digital sales on the Switch have exceeded physical sales for the first time in the United States. Um, I mean, yeah, no, th- at first that you're like, oh, wow, but then you sort of think about it, and it makes sense, I think. Um, obviously, all of the digital games that are coming out to the Switch that don't have physical releases, you know, are obviously yeah. going to dominate. Um, and then also just the fact that, like, the 32-gig uh, Switch carts, you know, are really expensive still so games like right. resident evil revelations 2 are like well you can only download it you know because they don't want to pay that extra money for the cartridges this is bull crap. so it makes sense that i hate you yeah. capcom you hold your tongue until they release resident evil 7 then you can yep. bad mouth them then put it on a cart yeah no i mean hopefully those i mean the carts will come down in cost you know it's yep. just a matter of time yeah. so well, remember, Revelations originally on the 3DS was going to be 50 bucks, And then they changed it at the very end because of that same exact reason. Do you remember that? Yep. Th- those dang old yeah, cards. And I got it for $20. Yep. And I got it for $5. But you didn't Theme have shop. a Circle Pad Pro. No, I didn't. Now, moving along I had, here, I had this is the true Perry moment. Yep, the hype moment. Is. Now, I, I, absolutely. When I, do you want me to talk about it and you react or do you want to are you excited and you want to give us Perry's that? dream comes true yes it does and then you, you, now what is that? the Hori D-pad controller or I should say Hori D-pad Joy-Con has been announced yes yes now it, yes. it is a left Joy-Con uh, that mm-hmm. will be sold j- as is so you're only you know just be purchasing this left Joy-Con and mm-hmm. um it's got a D pad. It's blue. It's got a big old D pad in there. It's got a big D pad instead of the buttons. And it, uh, it so, can't be worse than right. the Pro Controller. And and it's twenty to twenty five dollars. Yeah, it's cheap, but yeah, there's now, a reason. Why it's is cheap. it twenty to twenty five dollars? Yeah, there are uh, no gyroscope functionality, no accelerometers, uh, no HD rumble. And you can only use it in handheld mode. Yeah. So, so there's no Bluetooth. <laughs> so there are uh, definitely a lot of uh, yeah. holding a lot of things holding it back from being a real amazing thing. But uh, right. you know, Hori has made a lot of really great. You know, I yeah, good for them. I, I, I mean, stand like, by I'm, their place. I can't believe stand. they got. I can't believe they made an official Joy-Con. Like that's that's cool. I mean, they have made the uh, the Pro Control, the wired Pro controllers. Yeah, those are weird. The, the, yeah, they're cool. Though. I mean, oh, they, they look like, great, but like it's 30 like thirty bucks or something. Why do I need a wire? Dang it! <laughs> well, they're thirty bucks. They're like less than half the cost of a of a pro controller. Why do I need you know? thirty bucks? Dang it! No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I. But yeah, so I at first I was like, like I read that I'm like, oh no, like you can't. It's only like handheld. But then it's like, okay, it's twenty to twenty five dollars. That's nothing. Yeah, I, and the cheap price. I will is good. only use I only use the D pad and. In handheld mode, 
you know, and I, I rarely, t- I mean, like, I don't even know what game I would take the Joy-Cons off of, like, while I'm playing and then use the D-pad on. So I just think it won't be a, an issue. I think it'll, the only thing that kind of stinks is, like, for HD Rumble and stuff. Uh, <laughs> some, some games that have some cool HD Rumble. Only half like of your Switch is going to rumble. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. I mean, I still think it's worth it. We'll see. No, I think, um, like you said, I think if it was like 40 bucks or something crazy, they'd be like, well, screw that, yeah, you know? It's like, but yeah, it's cheap enough yeah. where, you know, the Switch is at the point where there are a lot of platformers that, you know, like Slime Song, you need pretty good control to be able to oh, do man, well, you know? so good on Slime Song. So, Slime Song Mutant Muds? Oh, man, Mutant Muds. Yeah, so I, I yeah, think baby. if you were... Oh. Yeah, if you're really into uh, your platformers here... Well... I should. I didn't uh, put that on the news story, but I'm actually adding it now. We'll talk about Chicken Wiggle in a minute. But uh, yeah, right. no, uh, definitely a good, um, a good thing for those who hate the D-pad because God knows I do. Um, at least on the Pro Controller, it is terrible. Uh, ugh. I don't think it's terrible, dude. It is but... awful. I mean, and I, what? No, hold on. Why do you say that? Because I. I mean, you. I'm not usually too picky when it comes to the controllers. You know, right? Okay. But it's just when you're playing, like, Celeste or something, it's just you can tell, like, you don't get good movement. Like, I'll be moving okay. left and right, and all of a sudden it'll be, like, up and down as well. It's just the D-pad yes. sucks. Okay, so you're talking about the flawed. So so you you just mean the... The functionality like, of the D-pad the, on the Pro right. Controller but, sucks. But you're not talking about the comfort, Oh, right? no, I know. It, it feels okay. fine. I, I, no, okay, I'm talking. Well, that's what I was kind of confused by. I thought you're. I thought like you were talking about like it didn't feel good, but it, yes, no, you're it's right. more. Like, it's just the it doesn't control yeah, well. Yeah, it's like it doesn't control well, which is pathetic. It's yeah, yeah. Obs- the D pad like, has I mean, been working works, since the NES era. <laughs> in, in some games, it's you 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 wouldn't be able to f- to know the difference just because that's just like if the up and down isn't a big deal. But yeah, some games it's awful, and it's like, I can't believe they got that wrong. Yeah, I, I seriously, um, whenever I'm playing like a platformer like that, I'm like, well, I'll I'll play, and then all of a sudden, the first time, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, D-pad sucks, and then I'll go grab the um, the Joy-Cons. Hmm, I'm, I haven't done that. I, every I, single I time, I, I'm like, better, nope, I'm just going to get the Joy-Cons, because... Well, you know what, I, and seriously, Casey... I wonder if it's worse on yours than it is like on mine. You know, I could see that being like down to a a a, a buy yeah, controller. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like it, it I understand what you're saying, but it really doesn't bother me a lot. Um and it's, it is really comfortable. So yeah. Oh, anyway, for me literally but, it's like that's it. Now I'm going fishing. Well, see the thing that stinks though is that you won't be able to 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 slot this D-pad Joy-Con in into a a a, jo- a Joy-Con grip. Yeah, that's the know? bummer. That stinks. But like I said, twenty bucks. If it's nineteen ninety nine, then it's like, oh, heck yeah. yeah if, you know? if, for if nothing more already, than just to try and see how it holds up. Yeah, I messaged because they haven't announced it for America. Obviously, I, I messaged the Bivs and I said, hey, I might need you to order that for me somehow. <laughs> uh, you could probably like play Asia, does imports yeah. and stuff. I'm sure you could probably get it yeah. through there. But um, yeah. yeah a, According to the the Japanese website I did like the Google Translate on, apparently coming out July twenty eighteen. So we uh, mm-hmm. not too far off, at least from a Japanese yep. release. Now, so you tell me in the past week Wario Land is rumored and a and a, a D pad Joy Con. Yes, sir. And <laughs> his will be done. And that's not everything. An all Texas Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> his will be done. Kicking right. <laughs> it in heaven. Um, next up here, we've got another update coming from Rocket League, which is great yes. because those guys are awesome and they keep this is crazy. supporting their game. Um, no, now I want to read it. Yeah, go for it. The tournament updates coming April third, which is just around the week. corner. Yeah, right before we go to PAX, dude. We're gonna play Rocket League in person. No, we won't. Okay. It inc- well, and it comes with an upgrade. It increases the base switch resolution to 900p, which is awesome, and 1080p quality mode. The gimped version, I assume. But yeah, no, that's a. Uh, it's awesome that they keep on um, 
you know, going back and trying to improve the game any way they can. And it's I <laughs> nice when you see the developers like really, I mean, I know Rocket League sort of a, a special case because it's sort of like a game that just never ends, you know? It's like, I feel like there's always going to be people playing Rocket League like at this point. So oh, yeah. it makes sense that Dude, they're always that, sort of evolving it a little bit, you know, but that cross platform functionality is coming and they said so you can play with people like a uh, party. Yeah, you can set party. up. Yeah, so, like, that's my cousin who plays on PC. Then we can have him play with us. So, you know, stuff like that. So cool. That's awesome. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, we also anyway. have some uh, interesting news. The Red Box, uh, which is like the movie and video game rental boxes that are just outside of random stores, um, have added Switch games to their kiosks in Denver, Salt Lake City, and Nashville. And uh, I guess more will be likely to f- to follow in different areas. Cool. So, you know, if you're in those areas, it's cool and go rent some Switch games. But I think those are like I think they're like two bucks a night. Um, it, I don't. I haven't rented a game from a Redbox in a really long time. I think it might be a little more I think expensive than fifty or three dollars. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe something like that. But still, I think it's like a buck fifty for DVDs, two fifty for or two bucks for Blu-rays and like three for. It, it'll it's it's good for those games you're not a hundred percent on. You know that it's like you can go yeah. rent it for a night and then if well, it, it hits, you can go buy it. And if not, you're like whatever. It, and to be honest, the only times I've ever rented games from Redbox is when I'm there and it's like, hey. We're offering a free rental today for a game. And it's like, oh, okay. Cool. I've I'll rented game one Why game not? from Redbox. Oh, yeah, hold on. I uh, Street Fighter? Nope. Close. Oh. Close. Uh, Same genre. Tekken? No. No, 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 no. no. Soul Calibur. Yes, sir. Soul Calibur. That's what it was. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Soul Calibur. Mediocre game. Not as good Medi- as Soul Cal 4. Speaking of f- mediocre fighting games... Pokin DLC Pack 2 is out. Um, I was going to say, be careful with, with things you say about games that people might love. Barry. No, no, I you know, no, I, I have know. no idea um, if this is a... Yeah, yeah the, the second <laughs> DLC pack is out, and uh, they've added the new characters. He now plays Blastoise, uh, Mew, and Celebi. I think Celebi might actually be like um, a support Pokemon. Like a support, yeah. I don't think you could... I think Mew and Celebi Yeah, you know what it is? Support, I, I, right? Yeah, that's definitely what it is. I think Mew a support. Yeah, Bull. he's yeah. I think Selby is like a. He's a legend. Isn't Selby a legendary Pokemon too? Or is she just a really cool looking Pokemon that everyone loves? Um, I don't but know. Uh, yeah, I guess each pack introduced a new character and then the support character. So, but Blastoise cool. is a pretty cool one. He's my favorite Pokemon. It would be you, Jimmy. Yeah, he's always my favorite. Always. So cool. Now, uh, rounding out, we've just got a couple of quick tidbits here. Oh, yeah. Wolfenstein 2, playable at PAX East. Uh, that's awesome news. Woo-wee. I'm looking forward to trying that game out. And I Hopefully wonder... We can go to the Bethesda event. I wonder if they might uh, give us a release date at some Ooh. point over that PAX weekend, if this is like the first big yeah. sort of uh, reveal for the Switch. Very interested in how good that game's going to look and feel, you know? I think it's going to be good, good, good. I'm looking forward to it. Next. Well, just because you think it doesn't mean it's going to come true. Don't forget, I've got a keen eye for good Vigi games. You do. That's true, and I don't. Yeah. You've got right. a blind eye. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've got a bad eye. Next up here, we've got Chicken Wiggle Reminder. Uh, we've got eight days to go until the kick uh, starter campaign is over, so it will be less when you hear this. They, uh, I th- where are they at now? We're, we're at, they're at 26, two th- or, sorry, let me, uh, scratch that. $26,208 of the necessary $30,000. So, oh, they're so, so close. $3,800 away, eight, eight days. I think, I think it will get there. Um, oh yeah. I think they will get there. Yes, yes. Now, which is exciting. Makes, yeah, you can jump over to Kickstarter. You just honestly Google Chicken Wiggle Kickstarter. It'll pop Remember right up. Jules was on the show when we talked about Chicken Wiggle, and it was amazing. And that's a really one of my favorite games last year. So good. Good old Julesy so. Jules. Yep. Now this last bit of news is just more of a an LOL little tidbit, if you will. Would you like to uh, ring this one out for us? Yeah. Uh, this is amazing. Nintendo has sponsored an octopus in the Berlin Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I love it. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's great because it's really it's related to Splatoon, right? Splatoon two, the Octo expansion, right? Yeah, so, I, I, it's so funny. Yes. They show like the placard next to like you know, obviously octopus is in water, so you you know get the big glass. And it shows like, oh, picture of the octopus, you know. It's all in German, so I, you know, I don't know what it said, but I'm assuming it told you a little bit about the octopus and the species or whatever. But then you go down and there's just like a big Nintendo logo and a big Splatoon 2 logo on the bottom, you know, like, it's like good old That's Nintendo. Amazing. I love the squids and the natural enemy, the octopus. Yeah, those octopi. Yep. But yeah, that's gonna be uh, the end of the old news block there. Like I said, not a Woo. not a too hardy, but I guess for Perry it was probably the best news block of all time. So, I think so. Yeah, it could have been. I mean, as long as the D pad isn't crappy and there is a Wario Land. Game, yeah, also it is the best. It, they just like trademarked it to never release another game, and like the D pad. Well, they stinks. gotta do that. <laughs> They're yeah. like, nope. We're just making per- we, we we had to build Perry up so we could break him down. Anyway, Casey, we have time for one more segment, and that is one, two, three, four. Listener, 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 man. Yeah. All righty. Yes, so um, neither of us uh, would were really playing or planned on playing uh, Detective Pikachu, and Gary had asked if uh, we were going to be interested or would be picking it up. Um, Our friend Gary Croxford, a listener of the show. Yep, and we were like, no, and uh, he ended up picking it up. And we said, well, if you want to uh, write in and tell us a little bit about your experience with this here fine game, we'd love to read it out for the fine people. And uh, he did just that. And would you like to read it, Perry, or would you like... uh... I would love to. Alrighty. All right, so here's... This is from Gary. He says, Having never unbelievably played a Pokemon game properly, I was simply a bit too old when they first came out and was on to Quake, etc. on PCs by that point. I wasn't really sure what to expect with this one. And he's talking about Detective Pikachu. All I knew is that this extra massive, therefore extra craveable amiibo was to be released. (laughs) So I pre-ordered that as soon as they went live and decided to watch for for NWRs of the world to review the game before plunking the old monies down on it. To be honest, I was busy on Thursday when the reviews went live and I thought, heck, I just censored it for you. I've bought the amiibo now. Help! Might as well, <laughs> might as well get the game, which I did. So he's yeah. To nobody's surprise, the game received an eight out of ten at. I can't read this because I don't read. Uh, I don't at, read at another so I'm, gaming I'm, I'm, outlet. Just kidding. At Nintendo Life, and as of the time of this writing, NWR doesn't seem to have the review up. So I went to EB Games here in Chile, Toronto, and picked up the game. <laughs> I like I like the yeah. chili Toronto. That's great. Good old Kennedy. Uh goes on to say, I'm not going to lie, after getting home I started to watch some Twitch with my with my missus who said, Oh, let's see what creative streams are up. We found this person doing an excellent cross stitch of the Super Mario World overwork screen, which simply dazzled me for a few good hours. Once that was over, I popped in the game and looked forward to what adventures I might get up to with my new yellow friend. The game was in my 3DS for about two hours. In short, not my cup of tea in the slightest. To be honest, the best thing about Detective Pikachu is that it got me to charge my 3DS and pop Samus Returns back in for a replay of that. (laughs) (laughs) The giant amiibo is due to arrive Monday and it'll sit in my collection probably not being used ho hum at least my at least my son is now reading and maybe he'll get more out of it on his new 2ds in a few months time so the uh the score he gave it should have actually read the review instead of just a number at the end out of 10 out of 10 (laughs) (laughs) and then he says uh p.s eb games here has See, here's the difference between that British talking and American. EB Games here has, I censored it, an awesome satisfaction guaranteed system. You can return physical games to them for seven days after purchase for a refund. I may just end up doing that. That's cool. That's a really good deal. I'm surprised more people, especially seven days. um, And if it's opened? That's crazy. Because, yeah, I feel like seven days is enough to 
beat a majority or like really play the crap out of a game if you wanted to sort of game the oh, system, yeah. you know. But uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, um, yeah. There, there you go, Pikachu, Detective Pikachu. He didn't like it. He didn't really go into depth about anything in the game <laughs> I know that. at all. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Uh, the first time I read this, I was like, "Man, I must have missed the part where you mentioned what the game was like." <laughs> <laughs> but nope. you know what? It just wasn't as. He of felt tea. words didn't even need to be spoken to to talk about it. You know, so. No, yep. I, no. Thank you for, of course, writing in. Yeah, a Pikachu, Detective Pikachu. When it first, um, you know, when it first started making waves. I remember waves, you saying not too long ago. Oh man. Oh man. I'm all in. Oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I was until I. Then it was just like, oh, I don't have any time to be playing Detective Pikachu right now. You know. Which is where I was at when I said you, that. You were just more clear on your schedule. I was being hopeful. You know. Yep. But yep. uh. But yeah. Silly, deluded old man. Yep. Yep, yep. Casey. <laughs> but, yeah. Gary, thank you so much for uh, emailing us. We're glad you're back, buddy. Good to hear from you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that's going to be the end of the show here. Of course, you can write in or tweet at us at Talk Nintendo Pod. What's that, Perry? Talk Nintendo P O D. Um, a few housekeeping things. We'll be at PAX. Uh, it's hard to believe it's just next week. We will be there. Uh, NWR has a panel 7:30 Friday night, uh, which is uh, Who Wants to Be a Nintendo Air, uh, where you can win some awesome prizes. And then on Sunday at noon, the Switches Surprise First Birthday Party panel, where yours truly will be up there, and Perry will be on a flight instead, like some sort of Jimmy. Mm-hmm. But Possibly, I might be. There. I hope you are. I hope you are. Um, and then, um, well, and come see us at NWR. Like, seek us out. Message us Twitter. Do something. We have stickers. Ooh. Cool stickers. Like, anyone who seeks us out can have a sticker or two. And you know what? They're going to be really useful for decorating in a few weeks. Your hoary D pad. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that'd be cool. But Labo's coming out, so. Um, oh, that's true. Yeah, they look cool with that. But, so, yeah, the, uh, the 2018 edition too. The, they're these are not repeats of last year's stickers. Nope these are these are new stickers. These are so. fresh, hot off the presses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just just to remind you. So, check out NWR stuff. You could get free stickers. Yep. And then uh, lastly, uh, I plugged it a little bit before, but again, I was on the Thirsty Mage talking about the Alliance Alive with David as well as Neil and Guillaume. So, um, you know. If you like RPGs and you are slightly interested in the Alliance Alive, we do a little uh, little review, spoiler-free podcast. you still podcast. play 3DS? Yep. Yeah, that's really cool. And I know that they just posted one for you Nintendo fans, a Persona 5 one. And I believe that's a monster podcast. Yeah, I think that one's uh, like... It's like three and a half. Three and a half, hours. yeah. So, uh, somewhere around that. So it's a, it's a doozy if you uh, are yeah. curious about hearing all about wow. that Persona 5 but yeah good stuff all around um I think uh I've said my piece <laughs> <laughs> you can now die. yeah yeah uh, <laughs> um yeah just again follow us at Talk Nintendo Pod we are going to be doing some giveaways well actually I'm gonna we're gonna do a PAX giveaway ooh wee boom it'll be going on during PAX yep so we'll announce it next week uh, so follow us so you can be in the loop for that and uh, check out all of our stuff at nintendoworldreport.com and uh, that's it doodles or should I say See you poodles really shaking it gary emails the show and tells us about pikachu evan perry whisker tildrum <laughs> i like i like the chili toronto or moon uh, did it say are you on the moon yeah well moon patrol i hope so